No other measure. No other measure, Jed. Mm. Not even horizontal engineering. Yeah. Just go back and look at legal notice number 88. If the man is unable to manage two homes, mm. why have two homes? <laughs> William Rutter decided to have two homes. Mm. He brought in, um, according to uh, Senator Newton, yeah. he brought in ODM. Yeah. And uh, they seem to be rattling them. Yeah. Yeah? Junette and my good friend, uh, Governor Gladys. <laughs> Gladys. They seem to be rattling. Yeah. They must la learn to live within that mix, Muchuzi mix. So we have, we're moving from bad to worse. If Kenyatta was bad, mm. William Ruto is worse. What gives him the idea that he can do as he wishes? This is not his personal house, this is not for going. Mm. I think the president needs to stop being simplistic. Is there a vacuum post Raila? Play one clip where Ruto has spoken truthfully. A very good day to you and welcome to Philip Kisia Unscripted. My name is Jadil Cabrera. It's always a pleasure, it's always a joy, it's always an honor to have you joining us every single week for these conversations. Conversations we hope will help our political leaders in making better policy and political moves. He says, if the truth shall kill them, I'll let them die. That is Philip Kisia, he's a former Nairobi town clerk, ex-KIC CEO. He has done a lot for this country and that's why we have him in this particular platform so that he can help us digest some of the situations, some of the happenings in this country. Kisia. It's always a pleasure to be at your place. How are you doing this particular Thursday? Jed, I'm okay. Yeah. It's been a, a, a long, long week. Yes. Full of drama. Yeah. But here we are. <laughs> Our conversation for today is all about the new funding model in UNIS. Everyone is talking about it. What is happening with scholarships for students, loans? Some are saying, just give us grants. Uh, is it high time we have free education in, uh, in our higher education places? Uh, but before we get to that particular place, Kisia, it's always good to start with what have you noticed, what have you seen this week that has caught your eye? Well, Jed, um, well, again, uh, thank you for coming mm. and uh, finding your way here. The, 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 the week has been very eventful, mm. I must say, uh, but uh, there are three things that caught my eye, my attention. Mm. The first one, is this so-called Adani group. Oh. And we've spoken about it before. But I'm getting a little bit worried. Why is this thing being pushed down our throats? Why? Mm. The thing is stinking. The thing is smelling so bad. You mm. know, it is smelling, it is rotten. You can only smell corruption. Mm. in this whole thing. You know, and I've been very keen to do a, a bit of reading on um, Adani. Mm. And I would want you at a certain point to play this uh, video, um, the video uh, which clearly indicates that uh, this Adani group was thrown out of Australia. Mm. At some point, the Indians, where they come from, are complaining and they have a raft of issues. Mm. Um, uh, you know, concerning this Adani group, ranging from non-delivery, inefficiency, corruption, and anything negative that you can think about. Climate change protesters have scaled trees in the heart of Sydney CBD during a rally against coal giant Adani. They, are they have a trail of cases all over the world. So as to why this Adani group is being pushed so hard by um, President William Ruto's administration, mm. only God knows why. Because if indeed we must hand over our assets, the, all the airports within the jurisdiction of Kenya mm. to one group called Adani, mm. why can't we then hand it over to people who have a good track record, to people who don't have court cases, mm to people who are not corrupt. Mm. And we have many who have, have you know, a, a brilliant track record. Mm. Why, for example, can we go to the people running, uh, I think it's Changi, mm. uh, in Singapore? Very efficient, you know, and they are proven with track, track record, mm. making huge profits as a state corporation. Why can't we go to Abu Dhabi mm. or Dubai 
where he has friends. Mm. If he really wanted to invite friends, mm. why not consider Abu Dhabi <laughs> yeah. or Emirates, where we can see for ourselves what, what has happened? Mm. Why not go for the best? Why are we pushing this Adani group mm. so hard? The questions that must be answered by William Bruto, and I can tell him, I'll be one of the people, Kenyans on the forefront, to oppose this thing in total. Mm. Completely. I'm against this thing completely. Mm. Because if you look at the Public Procurement Act, although it allows for privately initiated projects to be considered, mm. there must have been certain things that were done. There must have been a need by our airports, or rather the um, state corporation that has uh, been given the responsibility of managing our airports, mm. they must have shown a need. That need can only arise from a properly done feasibility study, which is then presented to the board. The board then approves. Then it is handed over to the parent ministry and finally a cabinet approval. Mm. But this Adani group presented a, pro a proposal to the government even before the government has shown any, any interest. Mm. So the question would be, who initiated the feasibility study? Mm. And if you look at our procurement act, it's very clear. If you are the one who is initiating, mm. and even in terms of good governance, you cannot be the one to, uh, to commission mm. a feasibility study, and then you then implement the same. Mm. They must be separated. A group which is doing the feasibility study. Then on the other side, we have um, uh, another group which will come and implement yeah. that feasibility study. But in this case, Adani appears to have done a feasibility study, appears to have done a proposal, mm. even before we ask for it. Mm. They even presented. And the government is hell-bent on actually ensuring that this um, proposal goes through. I, I, saw I am now saying, yes, and I'm joining other Kenyans, to say it is a no, this is not a personal asset. Mm. This is not an asset that belongs to the, K, uh, to, uh, to the cabinet of uh, President Ruto. Mm. This is an asset that belongs to the people of Kenya. And the constitution is very clear. If you are going to make any decision that will have an impact on the people of Kenya, mm. that will affect the people of Kenya, whether you think it is positive or negative, mm. there must be public participation. When did we have this part public participation? Mm. When was the feasibility start, uh, uh, study done? Who did that feasibility? Mm. Who paid for it? And why the Adani group? Why can't we open up that space so that we have more people, more reputable companies coming to make their proposals? Mm. We can only smell corruption. And I think the only thing that this government seems to be very uh, efficient at is rolling out mm. things that are shrouded in mystery mm. and have heavily list, list mm. with corruption. I saw CS Alfred Mutua assuring KA staffers that their jobs will not be taken all in who is Who is Mutua? Who is Mutua? Mm. Who is Mutua? Who is he? Mutua is a cabinet secretary for what? Labor. For labor. Is he the one running the airports? How, when, has he led that feasibility study? I doubt. Mm. Can you call him here for a debate? Can you call him here to explain himself mm. and tell us what informed that decision? Because from what we know, from the experience that Adani has presented, mm. they end up sucking. They end up mistreating workers. Mm. And it's for that reason, as Kenyans, we shall not allow <clears throat> this group called Adani mm. to operate in Kenya. And I must tell them, that they are making a very big mistake. Power is transient. If they are relying on President Ruto, he may not be there tomorrow. Mm. And if he's not th there tomorrow, and even by sheer luck that um, <coughs> President Ruto is able to, to, <coughs> to push through his agenda, mm. I can tell you for free. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. We shall put them on the next flight <coughs> out of Kenya. Mm. The other thing, of course, is um, um, it's very sad. I read a story somewhere. 
about um, the way we are treating our police service. Police officers, a very serious docket. And I remember Martin Shikuku saying, <clears throat> if you want a nation to prosper, <clears throat> the first person you must treat very well and pay very well <clears throat> is a teacher. Because it is out of a teacher that all of us <clears throat> draw our success. Okay? Then, <clears throat> the second one is a doctor. Because you need to be good, good health, even to be able to practice what you've been taught. So, in that order, there's a teacher <clears throat> and then and people in the medical profession, doctors. Mm. The third person who must be taken care of in a, in a society is somebody called a police officer. Or those in the security agencies, mm. they must be taken care of. Jed, do you know that now we read that um, the order that my good uncle, Joseph Mafue Nyekavludi, mm. Yeah? Mm. Notice number 88. Yeah. That spelled out very clearly on how promotions should be done, training of police officers, and so on. Everything is contained in that order. Okay? But it seems that the new kids on the block are ignoring things that, that, were, that, that were put in place mm. to en ensure that there's no you, you know, you don't need a fare from anybody. Mm. That it is through your qualification, through your hard work, mm. through your experience, that would you get a promotion. But it looks like, from what we are reading, people are even promoting girlfriends. Oh. Yes. <laughs> well. Can you imagine? Cousins, mm. relatives. In the police service. So what about if I'm not a girlfriend? of a, a senior person in this country. Yeah. What about if I am not related to a senior person in this country? Mm. What about if I don't believe in horizontal engineering yeah. to propel yeah. myself upstairs? Yeah. Yeah. What about? Mm. I think these things need to stop mm. because they are discouraging our young people mm. from serving the nation properly and when you see these um, officers dejected, mm. these are some of the causes. When you see some of the officers committing suicide, this is, some, this is it. <clears throat> some of them have been in the service for 20, 25, 30 years, no promotion. Mm. Then uh, some little kid comes because they are related to so-and-so, or their boyfriend or girlfriend <laughs> or so-and-so, mm. they are promoted. Is, is, is that how we are going to run this country? Mm. through favors that needs to stop especially when it comes to an area like security mm. it must be merit best mm. people must be propelled upward mm. using nothing no other measure no other measure Jed mm. not even horizontal, horizontal, horizontal engineering yeah just go back and look at legal notice number 88 that was put in place mm. by the team that was led by Johnson Mafueni Kavlodi. Okay. The last one. <laughs> okay. I saw Senator Nyutu. Yeah. I think he's your senator. Muranga. Oh, he's a senator from Muranga. Yeah. yeah but you're from Muranga? Yes. Yes, he's a senator. Yes. Why are you try, trying to run away? He's a good man. <laughs> but I've answered, yes. And he's a good man. <laughs> okay. What you're saying is yeah. that, uh, you know, uh, when a man brings in a second wife, the second wife and the, the other kids mm. must respect the children of the first wife and the first wife. That is okay and it is in order. Mm. But are you going to blame the, the, the second wife and her children? Mm. Blame the guy who brought in the second wife. Yeah. That is where the blame lies. Mm. The blame does not lie the with the second wife and the children. Mm. If the man is unable to manage two homes, mm. why have two homes? 
<laughs> William Ruto decided to have two homes. Mm. He brought in, um, according to uh, Senator Newton, yeah. he brought in ODM. Yeah. And uh, they seem to be rattling them. Yeah. Eh? Junette and my good friend, uh, Governor Gladys. Uh, Gladys. They seem to be rattling. Yeah. They must la learn to live within that mix, Muchuzi mix. Yeah. They must learn also to rattle. Yeah. Because now there are two homes. And uh, you'll see, yeah. this is bound to happen. In, in fact, if they are not careful, mm. you know what happened to Kanu. Yeah. The Tinga went in and <laughs> it, it brought down the house. Yeah. So <laughs> they must be prepared. <laughs> Uh, this house may, may not last beyond 27. So you're saying they should not complain, <laughs> Why but they look at their boss? No, they must look at the father and ask the father, Why do you bring in a, a second wife, Mama Mdogo? But Why? I, I was listening to, to the <laughs> same person who was saying <laughs> there is a deliberate attempt see, to undermine Gachagua. No, don't blame even Gachagua. Yeah. <laughs> don't blame. Gachagua has nothing. Gachagua is just a wife, first wife. Yeah. There's a second wife in the house. So who, if the house is in chaos, who do you blame? Do you blame, Jed? Do you blame the uh, wives or uh, the husband? So <laughs> the problem is not the wives. Uh, it is the husband who is unable to manage the, the homes. Okay. So my, my, my advice to mm. my good friend and, and the president mm. is that he, he now needs to come out and call <laughs> the house to order. Let's listen to Muranga, Senator. <laughs> kwa nyumba yetu na ni vizuri nyumba yetu ikawa ni pale na ni vizuri tunapongeza baba Raila Amolo Odinga lakini ana watoto wake watatu ambao hawana adabu na wale ni Gladys Wanga na mtu anaitwa Junet Muhammad hatukufurahia wakikejeli rais naibu wa rais kule kwao naibu rais amejiunga nao but they were very sarcastic of him. Wakimwambi haga wana milima. Mlima ambao deputy president amekuwa kizungumzia ni mlima Kenya na ninajiunga naye. Usama lazima tuungane kwanza alafu ndio kwenda kule nje tuungane na wenzake. So I Kisia, it's, it's as if Gashagwa now, who you call the first wife, is in trouble. Would you read from the same script them saying that these guys are just humiliating the president, the deputy president? You see, of course. They are making him uncomfortable. Mm. And Gashagwa, mm. <laughs> I think he has learned very fast that uh, he needs to create his own space. Mm. Okay? And uh, now, uh, you know, uh, he has actually remembered that uh, mm. he is uh, the mother and father of people from the Murima. Mm. So let him not uh, uh, keep on complaining. Mm. Let him just learn to live and survive within the marriage. Is a polygamous marriage. Yeah. That is the thing. Mm. And if he's dissatisfied living in a polygamous arrangement, mm. Rigadi Gashagwa must leave. Let's talk about the conversation in the country, starting from Kisi Senator Richard Onyonka's controversial statement that we can afford free education in Kenya. This comes after this conversation about university's new funding model. Currently, 12,000 students have filed appeals against their funding categorizations. There are five tires uh, within this new funding model. Philip Kisi is here to talk to me about that today because Kisi... The question has been, since we started with free primary education from President Kibaki's time, <coughs> can we afford free education from PP1 all the way to fourth year university? Is Senator Onyonka's assertions that this is possible actually realistic? Jed, I want to fully associate mm. with Senator Onyonka and those who believe that education should be free. Mm. Okay. One, education is the future of a nation. Mm. If a nation fails to educate its population, mm. then it does not have a place in the global arrangement. Mm. Because about education, education, education. Mm. Okay? If you're not doing it, other countries are doing it. If they're doing it, they'll obviously be more competitive than you. Because education changes a community mm. positively. It has a great impact on people. The way they think, 
the way they behave, the way they work, it changes you completely. It gives you a different perspective. It puts you on the, lo uh, on the uh, global scene. So, if President Emeritus, mm. Mwai Kibaki, within his first 100 days, <clears throat> he was able to feel, fulfill his election uh, campaign pledge mm. of giving free primary education. And remember, when Kibaki took, took over, what was our budget, national budget? Mm. It is equivalent to the Minister of Education's current budget. Yeah. The entire budget. Oh. 600, entire budget. 600 and something. That is what Kibaki worked with, worked, with, worked with. But he was able to give us free primary education. Mm. And it worked. The transition from primary school mm. to secondary school was almost 100%. Mm. So Kibaki did it. And remember, Kibaki took over <clears throat> a government when our growth was, I think, negative. We're mm. in negative growth. <clears throat> okay? So Kibaki took, uh, took over a government, an economy that mm. was much weaker. Okay? But he made it. So the question that one would want to ask is, how come Kibaki made it? Mm. given those conditions. How come? It is about management. Mm. It's about priority. He was able to reorganize the government priorities because he put a lot of weight on education and therefore he looked for the money. Mm. And there was a will. And there was a focus. Then came President um, Uhuru Kenyatta. He gave children free secondary education, mm. at least within his term. Mm. Okay? He took over from an economy that was growing, mm. that was much better than, uh, th that was doing well. Mm. But he also grew the economy. He grew our budget, he grew our revenues. He grew our collections from KRA and therefore he found money to provide free secondary education. Mm. Kenyans were hoping, and I think if I remember very well, President Ruth had promised to give our children free education. Free education means right from nursery school to university. That is what it means. Mm. And it can be done. Mm. Considering this budgetary Look at this. constraints Jed, that they talk what about. What constraints are you talking about, Jed? I will start with what I've said before. Not what I've said before. Mm. Restating what the Kenya, go, go, uh, Kenya, uh, Kwanzaa. Kenya Kwanzaa. I know you wanted to Kenya say Kwanzaa <laughs> government, something else. The Kenya Kwanzaa government <laughs> yeah. has said... You know, you're in a broad-based government, so yeah. I need to be fair. <laughs> so, <laughs> you see, they have admitted. Mm. So it is not my information, it is their information, mm. that we are losing 3 billion shillings per day through corruption. Mm. That was less to about 1.2 trillion, loss through corruption. But you see, we, you have a president who does not believe in fighting corruption. He doesn't believe in corruption. Have you heard him talk about corruption? Mm. Have you heard him put emphasis on corruption? Mm. He doesn't. It means that uh, he's okay with the status quo. In fact, at least Kenyatta mm. was only losing two billion per day. This mm. man has gone to three billion. Yeah. So we have we're moving from bad to worse. If Kenyatta was bad, mm. William Ruto is worse in terms of corruption. Mm. So if he has the will to even reduce corruption by 50%, mm. he already has money not only to finance free primary education, but to give free even medical health care. Mm. He has enough money. But because he does not believe in fighting corruption, mm. he has to look for other ways of financing his budget. Mm. But just look at it, Jed, this way. 
that the Ministry of Education takes about 25% of budget. Mm. It consumes about 628 billion shillings. Straight. That goes to Ministry of Education. Then we have these things called bursaries. Mm. Every constituency has between 30 and 40 million annually mm. for bursaries. Then you have MCS between a million and five million. Then you have governors between 50 and 200 million. Then you have government agencies who have a budget of a, in excess of 25 billion. Mm. All that money put together in these agencies called help, I don't know what, or Elimu, what, all these things, and the money given to the Ministry of Education, mm. if you put that money in one kitty mm. and you give it to one group mm. to, uh, to, uh, you know, to administer, we shall have more money than we need to provide our children, not just with free education, mm. but quality education. At the same time. Not just free. Mm. Not free, Jed, but quality education. Mm. We'll have more money to pay our teachers. The number one worker, number one worker, teachers, mm. will have more, uh, will have enough money to pay Mm. our teachers good salaries okay mm. we can take care of our teachers but, the, but because uh, President Ruto does not believe in fighting corruption mm. he has not been a good manager mm. he believes you know he, they have wasted almost two years just talking about oh how Uhuru this, Uhuru that, Uhuru that, Uhuru that. Mm. forgetting that they are now on the steering in terms of time this administration has, has actually consumed 30, almost 30% 30 of its time in office. Mm. Soon to be 35% of their time in office. Mm. Yet we have nothing to see. Do you, how, what have you seen? Let's mm. even, you are, we talk about education. Mm. What have we seen? Apart from even closing, the other day they wanted to close about 24 campuses, yeah. universities. To close them down. Mm. So you are closing universities because mm. they, 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 you know, they, they are not uh, viable. But then you are moving around the country, doing some very stupid little things, mm. uh, like upgrading secondary schools into universities yeah. and small colleges into universities. Why can't you say, okay, now we have more than enough? Mm. Let's build capacity, let's make them efficient, mm. let's improve the quality, and then at a later stage we can probably think of uh, increasing numbers. But for the time being, focus on the, the ones you have. Mm. So, Jed, I strongly believe, very strongly believe, mm. that with proper management, with giving attention to education matters, mm. that we can give free and quality education. No, I'm looking at... From nursery school. I'm looking at 12,000. From 000. nursery school. Yeah. Up to university. 12,000 students have filed appeals against the funding categorization. Uh, and this is... When we're looking at the worst time in the history of this country when it comes to transitioning from secondary schools to university. What are the long-term impacts of this kind of situation where we have students who have finished high school and they cannot afford to go to university and they're staying at home? What, what, what are we looking at? My friend, you can imagine if your parents didn't uh, uh, ensure that uh, you went to college and completed college. Mm. Would you be here? No. Where would you be? S somewhere at home, probably. Causing what? Causing problems. I know. Okay? So, if this trend continues, that our children who have qualified to go to university, mm. I just left to loiter in the streets. The level of insecurity in this country will be unmanageable. Mm. Okay? Leave alone destroying a country's future. Because you need labor. You need quality labor. You need trained labor. Mm. Yeah? You are talking about growing the economy. How can you grow an economy when you don't have people who are properly educated mm. in various fields? in various professions. How can you even export 
quality labor. Mm. Because I've heard President Ruto talk about, you know, finding jobs abroad. We don't want him to find jobs for people, for cleaning toilets in the Middle East. Mm. We want him to find proper jobs for our people. Because we want all our children at the very minimum to get to technical level, technical mm. schools, TVIT. Okay, at the very minimum. Mm. So that when you're exporting labor, you're exporting labor that is going into some gainful and mean, meaningful mm. job opportunities. Mm. But the jobs they're currently talking about, cleaning streets mm. in Europe, and uh, uh, taking care of old fellows mm. in Europe, as if we don't have old fellows here to be taken care of. Mm. What nonsense. You know, what I, nonsense is this? I so, was... really, we need to be a bit more, more serious mm. in matters to do with education. It is a disaster. It is a time bomb in waiting. And if President Ruto thinks that uh, the Gen Zs gave him problems yeah. and sleepless nights, yeah. and I even saw, you know, I mean, his physique changed, yeah. and they put him under, uh, you know, they put him under house arrest yeah. or country arrest. Yes. They put him under country arrest yes. for two months. These was the ones who are being ignored mm. and not being, um, um, you know, uh, the government not ensuring mm. that they get quality education mm. to the levels uh, that can benefit them in future. Mm. So that they become employable. Mm. It's just a time bomb waiting. You know, it's a time bomb. I was listening to one of the students during a town hall and he was saying, What was so wrong with the old funding model? What was so wrong with help? What are the challenges in coming up with a funding model that ensures that all students uh, receive monies in, without discrimination? Because now everyone is thinking, Well, why are we where we are? Wasn't help working to some extent? You see, the problem with President Ruto is that he wants to experiment on Kenyans. He thinks that Kenyans are uh, you know, guinea pigs, mm. that he can experiment at will. Mm. You know, leave alone the constitution. When you are going to make such a fundamental uh, change on a matter that is affecting people's lives, mm. there needs to be proper public participation, stakeholder participation. Mm. So the people who should have been consulted very broadly mm. are the children who are in secondary school, who are in probably uh, higher uh, uh, learning institutions. Mm. They should have been consulted so that they give, make their input. Mm. And they say, this is the, the type of model mm. that would work for us. Mm. Okay? But when you, you are using, I thought it was... A, a, a bottom up yeah. arrangement. Yeah. Bottom up, you start from the bottom, consulting yeah. and going up. But it was top, top down. Yeah. That you already have an idea yeah. and you want to force that idea down the throats of people. The, and the students have told us, our children have told us, mm. that there was no public part. They, they, yeah. they were not consulted. Yes. They were not consulted. They told Yet they are their consumers. Yeah. So do you expect them to accept your arrangement mm. when you are pushing it down their throats and I hear they have issued a, a, a strike notice. Actually University of Nairobi had a strike on okay. Monday. Okay. Yeah. And if that thing is not properly managed mm. because parents are going to join in other Kenyans will join in because they are talking about the future of our children. Mm. We are not going to allow mm. our children's future to be messed up by one, two, three, or this cabinet of mm. Kenya Kwanza. How, how do we ensure that? We shall not allow them. Yeah. They, they must be put on notice. The big problem. That if they think yeah. that this one, this one, this one, it will not go down well. The big problem with this one this is. This one will send them home. It's, it's, it's this, been, one, this one, this yeah. one, dead, take it from me. They will go home before 27. This one they should not play with. They are playing with the future of our children. Mm. It will take them home, back to their villages before 27. And now yeah. that they have assisted, or they are, they are very happy that um, mm. there's some calmness, yeah? Mm. And they're happy that they're uh, they assisting 
Baba mm. uh, to go to AU, mm. Baba will not be there to stop the fire. They are going home. The big problem with this one was accuracy in determining where a student should be placed in, in terms of these tires. Because you say uh, Kisia was in this school or Kabiro was in this school, but then it's difficult to know whether their families can manage to pay at a different tire. How can we solve this problem? Why should even be tires in the first place? Hmm. Why should there be tires? Hmm. Education, I mean, in my view, should be, is, is basic. Hmm. Education is basic. And we have sufficient resources to educate our children. But even if you must have those bands, mm. okay, they, we need to have proper consultation. And I think even there are too many. Mm. I think one up to five or yes, whatever yes. it was. Okay? Then the other thing is, you are saying if I was in a private school, mm. okay, you don't know why even the person went to a private school. Maybe the person was sponsored by somebody. Yeah. Maybe, most yes. likely. Which private school did the person go to? Mm. It may be in Sugoi somewhere in a small village. Yeah. It is a private school because they could not access maybe government schools. Mm. Okay? So I think we needed to have a bit more thought. The thought process appears to have been, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's something that was rush through mm. just to ensure that somebody was pleased. The people who were running with this program were running with it to please somebody. So from they forgot yeah. that the consumers of education are our children. Okay? Mm. The consumers of our education is not William Samuel Ruto. Mm. It's our children. I don't think he has any I don't think William has any children in private, in, 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 in government primary schools. Mm. I don't think he does. So, if he did, yeah. then he would know the pain that people are going through. So, that those schools don't have infrastructure, mm. they have nothing. And even the small little monies that are being taken there are just being stolen and eaten mm. by people. So from where you sit, these models and everything should just be abolished. What, we, abolish, we, what, what models? Abolish this thing, make it free. Uh, Do away with these bursaries. Mm. Stop theft in the Ministry of Education. Stop theft. Mm. Stop the stealing, my friend. You will have more money than you need to run, to, to run schools, mm. to run the education se sector, and to provide quality education. Mm. and to pay our teachers properly because our teachers need to be compensated properly. Mm. We must pay our teachers properly. You can't be paying a politician mm. for doing nothing. What do they do? They just sit there and the only thing they grow is above their waist. Most of them have grown above their waist. Up to the neck. <laughs> the head is not growing. Yeah. The, 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 you know, the matters in the head are diminishing. Yeah. This needs to stop, Jed. And we must not shy away from talking for, uh, talk about these things. Yeah. We are not going to spend so much money on a few people. We are not going to spend our money. Ibrahim Taore, you've seen that young man. Look at the life he's living. Mm. Is he living in opulence? He has cut, cut, cut so many things. And he's directing that money to the right places. Mm. President Ruto, given his background, he should be the last person to live in opulence. He knows where he came from. He knows the primary schools he came from. He went, went through secondary school and public universities. He needs to make sure that these things work. Not all Kenyans. In fact, I am talking on behalf of more than 95% of Kenyans, mm. they cannot afford anything because their money, their resources are being stolen by the thieves in this government. Yes, we have never had thieves. Mm. I mean, we have governments. We have, have had five presidents. Before him, there were four. But we have never seen this level of theft mm. or public resources. We have never seen this type of incompetence since independence. Mm. 
just look at even from Jomo Kenyatta, even up to uh, you know uh, this uh, young man Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm. Look at them. Look at the people they gave us as ministers for education. Then you come and just give us nothing. Mm. Because you want people you can control. For heaven's sake, this must be a warning to William Ruto that if he continues with the same way, Chamtemakuni, it is. That's a conversation about education sector, new funding model. Should education be free? Do you think we can afford it? Do you agree with Philip Keys here that let's do away with all these models and give our students education for free? But before we wrap up, Kamakawaida, Philip Keys here, I usually like you to finish up with an inspiring message, but sometimes you hit hard. Do you have anything to wrap up with? Now, you see, you, 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 you now want to gag me. <laughs> yes, I want to gag you. <laughs> let's, let's inspire Kenyans, Kidogo. Well, Kenya, this is your country. You have a choice to make it work. If the country burns, it burns with all of us. So Kenyans must be ready to make certain sacrifices. Mm. I have seen some young people moving around this country, mm. collecting signatures. I think the time these people had to be in office and protected by the constitution is over. Mm. Kenyans must send these people home before 2027 mm. if you are to save Kenya. Say time. Otherwise, Kenya is finished. Well, I thought it would be inspiring, but <laughs> Kenya is finished. <laughs> that is Philip Kisi for you. Thanks for tuning in. Philip Kisi and Scripted. This is Hamid Minyora's YouTube channel. My name is Jael Kabir. Until we do talk again, have yourself a lovely rest of your day. What gives him the idea that he can do as he wishes? This is not his personal house, this is not so going. I think the president needs to stop being simplistic. Is there a vacuum post-Raila? Play one clip where Ruto has spoken truthfully.